OK, I'm going to take on this question uh, with the statement being the Supreme Court has the power to protect rights effectively. And we're analysing and evaluating this statement. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to look at this in the context of this kind of draft plan where you consider the introduction, consider the conclusion. And we look at mainly at three different paragraphs with arguments for and against to show our balance of our argument with clear evaluation. There are a couple of articles which are quite helpful for this in more recent politics review. One, should the UK have a Bill of Rights? And secondly, this one, which is comparing US and UK Supreme Courts, which is going to be handy for us as we move into the United States Supreme Court later on. So there's definitely benefits in reading these articles and I can make them available to you. OK, think about the introduction. Remember, we want to do certain things. We want to define our terms. We want to consider the debate and where the debate really lies. So first of all, start with what the Supreme Court is. Created by the Constitutional Reform Act in 2005, opened in 2009, it's an independent body of other political institutions in the UK. Certainly the period from 2005 has seen an increase in prominence in the UK Supreme Court, and its activities linked to judicial review, especially in the protection of rights. There's no doubt about that. But in your introduction, you also want to show that you're going to consider how you're going to evaluate this. And I think this protection must be considered in terms of its relevance, of its constitutional powers, and how well it impacts upon government decisions. So, our first assertion, our first perspective, if you like. The passing of the Human Rights Act in 2000 has been significant in the rights protection in the UK. Well, certainly the incorporation of the European Convention on Human Rights in the UK courts has simplified the process of judging on rights law. In the past, judges would have had to use statute law, common law, a whole range of different things in which to make those decisions. And as a result of this, what we've seen is judicial review increasing as more citizens and groups have been willing to use it. The evidence is stark. As you can see below there, cases rising from 4,000 to over 15,000 by 2013. And also the range of cases is quite interesting from same-sex marriage through detention of foreign nationals to the case such as the Uber one on employment law most recently. However, you've got to be aware that perhaps this isn't enough. And it has been argued that the Human Rights Act is a little bit too limited in scope. Other social and economic rights remain relevant. A UK Bill of Rights could enshrine the importance of rights for all social groups, allowing greater social mobility and removing disproportionate levels of ethnic minorities, both in prison and in poverty. So there are limitations, I guess, you could put forward in regards to the Human Rights Act. But if you looked at it as an overall evaluation, I would probably argue that the role of the Supreme Court of being the forefront of rights protection is now much more evident as a result of the Human Rights Act being put in place. Second assertion is that the government is now more restricted by the courts in their actions. Well, the arguments in favour of that are that the court has ruled against the government in some pretty major decisions in recent times where the executives considered to act beyond their constitutional powers. There's also a life for a growth in the powers of devolved assemblies away from Westminster control. The two obvious examples of this were in regards to the signing of Article 50 beyond parliamentary approval and the court ruling against Johnson's government wished to prorogue parliament without its approval. And the fact that the court is protecting parliament is significant because it's actually protecting the rights of parliament to be the representative of the people. Arguments against this is to say that the government is in a fairly strong position still. It has the capacity when enjoying a parliamentary majority, such as Johnson's, to alter legislation to suit its growth and powers. For example, the balance between national security and individual rights that exist in this country are still defined by parliament rather than by the courts. So the government only really needs to alter aspects of legislation when instructed to, such as is shown in its anti-terrorism laws. And again, the court will always be reliant on the cases being brought to them to challenge government actions, especially in the case of delegated legislation, which, if you remember, is the parts of legislation that the ministers can decide and therefore they can fill in the gaps. Therefore, what do we say? What's our evaluation? Well, the profile of the court has certainly been raised and its capacity to challenge the government has led to ministers and civil servants certainly being wary for the potential of judicial review. That would imply that there is more of a restriction as a result of the Supreme Court being in place. OK, third point. Well, our assertion here is the Supreme Court enjoys independence from political institutions and as a consequence of that can protect rights. We know that the court is appointed independently and therefore they are unaccountable to an electorate or other interest groups. 
This can allow for impartiality and therefore should reinforce rights protection. Lord Wolfe, when he was Chief Justice in 2004, explained how significant that was because the court was there to remain vigilant, making sure the executive is in overstepping its use of powers in, against, its student, against its citizens. The argument against this is that actually the court is in as independent as it seems. It's being criticised by politicians and the media because of the nature of its composition. We know that the court is white, old and male and can suffer from a reputation of actually being fairly, part, fairly much part of the traditional establishment. You could also argue that perhaps the judges have been too liberal in their attitudes, certainly by politicians of both major parties have argued that uh, their judgments in regards to immigration and deportation have gone against public opinion. But perhaps that's the role that the Supreme Court should play. Therefore, what do we say? Well, with the creation of the Supreme Court in 2009, the court became obviously separate from the political institutions, remembering that they used to be part of the House of Lords, and therefore has reinforced the independence in cases since, allowing for the ongoing protection of rights. So in conclusion, where do you stand? Well, your conclusion should have three parts. You should start with a clear judgment. In the light of the evidence, does it have the power to protect rights? And does the evidence suggest this? You've got to make your decision one way or the other. If you argue that it does, remember that what you want to do is you want to accept certain arguments that go against you and acknowledge the fact that they have some strength. For example, if you say that the court does have the power to protect the fight rights effectively, you should acknowledge that the fact that the constitutional position of parliament is still ultimate and therefore is the key limitation of the court's power. If you argue against and say the Supreme Court has, has limited power to protect the uh, individual's rights, then you would want to be saying that, well, actually, the court has shown the capacity to challenge the government more regularly in recent times. Then you want to think about how you're going to sustain your actual judgment. What is the thing that you're actually picking on? What's the reason that you're picking on that's going to work best for you? If you're arguing in favour, you might focus on the growth of decisions related to the Human Rights Act. If you're arguing against, you really want to still talk about the limitations of the court constitutionally. That's your judgment, it's how you build it, but you should have these elements in there in your answer. Good luck.